All right, so just to recap a little bit on the last couple of questions from the lab um, from yesterday. So a really important function that we're gonna continue to talk about is the mutate function. And so number four was about creating a new variable using the mutate function. The mutate function is helpful for creating new variables or modifying existing variables. Um, <clears throat> so in this case, we were working with the car sub data and we wanted to create a new variable that would be called WT2. And we're making that based on an existing variable called WT and we wanna get the squared version of the values. So we're gonna use piping. And in this case, you can just pipe the data that you're interested in working with into the functions that you're, you're working with. So <clears throat> this can make it helpful to read later if you have a lot of sequential steps and you wanna tell what data you used for this giant process of multiple steps. Um, so I recommend doing that. And so, so we have the data that we want to use. Then we put our pipe with our uh, percent signs and our greater than sign. And then <clears throat> we um, have the mutate function. We already know what data we're going to use because it's coming from this first part of the piping. And then we just specify that we have our new variable name and what it's going to be, which is you know the old variable um, to the second power. And so this is sort of like the a similar setup to rename where we have our, our new name and our old name. Um, and then we're reassigning everything to the same data called uh, car sub. So if I were to run everything before, it's gonna take a second. I'll see that what I had previously was just these three columns, and now I have this new column called WT2, which is the square of each of these values. And the last question was using the relocate function, which can be really helpful if you create a new function, um, a new variable with mutate because it'll automatically place it at the end. But sometimes that might be your most important variable. So relocate's really helpful for this. Um, in this case, we've decided that WT2 is super important, so important that we want it in front of car. So um, we're asking you to make it first, the first variable. When we look here at the existing data, we see that the car variable is the first variable. So we use the relocate function and the dot before argument to say that we want the um, WT2 variable to come before this variable. And again, we're using the same setup, the data we want to use piped into the function that we want to use, and then um, which variable we're moving and where we're moving it to. And then we're reassigning everything um, to the original data object name. And when we run that, we see now that W2, T2 is no longer here, it has moved to here. So that's that. Great, thanks, Carrie. Uh, it, it definitely is hard to get warmed up in the lab uh, first thing in the class. So uh, if you do have any follow-up questions, yeah, just please ask us. Okay, um, so next we'll be talking about data summarization. Let me go ahead and share. Can everyone see both my um, my R console and and uh, yep. website? Great. <laughs> All right. Let me move some of the stuff around. Okay. And so we're just scrolling down, uh, going to the schedule and doing data summarization today. Okay. And let me just adjust the size of the window a little bit. So that it fits nicely. All right, cool. Okay, so what is data summarization? 
Um, so we've learned how to do a lot of kind of really cool manipulation of our uh, subsetting and manipulation of our um, data frames so far. But you know, maybe we don't want to look at the whole data set. And we just kind of want a, a good idea what's going on in some of our variables. Uh, the good thing is that R is great for some of these kind of mathematical functions uh, that we'll be talking about today. So um, the good thing is a lot of them are pretty straightforward in what their names are. So it's pretty easy to tell what they do. Um, so, so here are some of our statistical summarization functions. And of course, don't have to memorize all of these. And we'll talk about uh, them in more examples later on in the lecture. But um, we're going to work with mean. Um, so this is different. It's not um, average or anything like that. So it's a statistical mean, um, standard deviation, median, uh, quantile. Um, is this going to display uh, the min, the max, and the 25% um, quantiles by default? There is a little bit of information you can give it to do uh, different stuff. Range is the maximum and minimum. Um, some, you know, maybe you want to total up um, all of the values in a, in a vector or in a column. Um, and then, of course, max and min, um, just like in range, that's uh, if you want to break them down separately. And all of these functions have an argument. We're going to talk about this more later. You're going to see it a lot, is this na.rm argument. And this is very important. It's going to remove NAs from whatever you're taking the mean or the sum on. Um, so that's, yeah, it's super key, um, but we'll talk about it more. Um, we're not going to go very much into transformations, but just be aware that you can do things like square root. You can do log, um, base E, log 10, all that kind of stuff are super good at that. Oops. OK, um, so basic, you know, just getting started, kind of working with these functions. We're going to go back to vectors a little bit. Um, so now you should, you know, this should kind of look um, a, a little bit easier compared to data frames. Um, but we're going to take just, you know, a combined um, a combined vector of items. So it, they have to be numeric because uh, we're doing some kind of su uh, statistical summarization on them. Um, and all we do is just put that inside whatever that function is. Um, so I'm just going to copy this actually and drop it in my console. Okay. And then if I do mean of X, boom. I, uh, I get the mean of whatever it is that I gave it. Same thing, range sum uh, works very much the same way. Um, range just gives you two numbers instead of one. So it's the, the min and the max. Okay, and just like I said, many of these functions have this um, additional argument. So if we want to remove NAs from our data, our uh, whatever the vector is or item is that we're trying to take the mean or the sum on. If we have NAs, we're going to have to tell it what to do. So let's say I have this vector X and there's an NA in there. Same thing, I'm just going to save that. Um, but then I do the mean. I get NA because R doesn't know what that NA is supposed to be. If you think about it, you know, you just missed some data in your data collection. That NA could be a thousand, it could be a negative number, it could be anything. And so R doesn't want to make that assumption for you. And so it'll tell you, hey, I don't know what the mean is. I'm just going to say NA unless you specifically say that NAs can be eliminated, can be dropped from the data. So the way I'll do that is do a mean of X just like before, but then I'm going to add this na.rm equals true argument, okay? And so what this does is it effectively just, it just ignores this na, okay? It's not doing any weird imputing or any uh, weird stuff there. It's just taking the mean of all the values that aren't na, okay? Um, so um, mean with NAs gives you this NA output, 
but um, one of the functions actually just gives you an error instead. So just be aware, um, you know, it gives you actually a little bit more information. So if you need that reminder, it's kind of handy for that, but it doesn't give you um, the nice um, output without erroring out like mean does. Okay, but just like with mean, quantile uh, has this exact same argument to remove the NAs. Okay, so that's how things work when we have just a, a vector of numbers, but uh, you're here to kind of work on your data. So let's see how this would work with a data set. So really simple, short, small data set. Um, this JHU car is one that we've kind of been working with a little bit before. Um, so let's use that to kind of explore how this works. And just as a reminder, um, there's the different cars, there's MPG, horsepower, weight of the car, cylinders, all that stuff. Okay, so we talked about this a little. This is the base R notation, and I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try not to use this later on in the lecture, but you may run into it. Um, if we wanna pull out a specific column of our data frame, uh, we use this dollar sign in base R, okay? So um, if I wanted to pull out the HP column, that's kind of what that looks like right there. So I believe I have JHU cars loaded. Yep. And I do the dollar sign. It's going to give me all those options. OK. So in this case, let's do HP. And if I want to take the mean of that numeric column, so let's just uh, prove to ourselves that it can have some summarization done on it. Yep, it's numeric, should be fine. And let's say I want to do the mean on that. I can get uh, basically the mean of that column across my data. Um, and same thing, the other functions work much the same way. Okay, so slightly different um, uh, dialect here. Um, and so this is sort of, uh, more intuitive way of looking at it, I think. Um, so in this case, I'm taking the JHU cars data set, I'm using the pipe, and then I'm just pulling the column that I want. And so this, remember, it extracts that column out as a vector so that that uh, means some, whatever that summarization function is can actually work on it. Um, and of course you can kind of use uh, the different notation here um, if you only want to use one pipe. <laughs> um, okay, so just to run that. You see that this is this isn't looking like a column of a data frame. This is looking like a, a, a vector. Okay, so it's just giving me a vector of numbers, and that's exactly what I want to plug into the mean function. So I go ahead and just do mean. I'm gonna move my uh, chat here. Uh, works the same way, and you see I get the same exact number as up here. Even, uh, even more of these summarization functions. So median, I'm literally just replacing this last thing at the end um, or changing the column that I'm interested in. So that first part doesn't need to change. Um, the cool thing about quantile um, is you can give it this probs argument and say, you know, I want like the 10th percentile or I want the 90th percentile. You want a specific percentile that you can you can do that, um, and so this case I've given it the argument 0.6, and it's given me the 60th percentile of this weight column. Okay, and so maybe you're interested in doing not just one column, but maybe multiple, or you're interested in taking an average across, you know, maybe you have a time series or something like that across different columns and you want to um, take the mean for every observation, uh, you know, like a, a mean across years or something like that. 
uh, that there are functions that can do this kind of stuff. So row means takes the mean of each row of X. Uh, and so that creates a little counterintuitive that creates a new column containing those row means. Uh, call means basically takes the means of each column. So, you know, if you have a column of, of HP weight, whatever, um, it creates the means for each variable, basically. Um, row sums works the same way. If you want to take the sum across rows or column sums, if you want to take the sum across columns. Um, and summary, this one just gives you tons and tons of output and statistics uh, with very little, you know, you don't have to give it very much. And it uh, gives you some quantiles and max and min, like all that good stuff and uh, tells you the missing data, I believe. And so that can be a great way, just like glimpse that we talked about earlier, can be a good way to just get a sense and a feel for what your data looks like. Okay, so let's move on to a slightly different data set. Um, so we're gonna work with um, tuberculosis data and just look at some incidents data for that. And so I'm just loading it in here. Um, this is a, a way to get it into R. If you have the JHUR package, you can just run this. Um, or if that's not working for you, you can do, download, uh, download here and do what we learned in data IO and bring it into R. Um, kind of more steps there, but um, just to kind of practice working on these summarization things, um, you can bring it in this way. Okay, I'm just going to check out the data. Always a nice thing to do, you know, see what you're working with. Uh, so I'm just going to do a quick head of TB. Um, and it looks like what we've got is different countries in this first column. And then we've got um, incidents, and I think it's incidents for. Um, 100,000 people across different years. And so like, for example, um, in Algeria in 1990, there were thir uh, 38 cases per 100,000 people. Um, okay, so I uh, got a question in the chat about um, the specific quantile. Um, so if you wanted to tell it, I want the 10th percentile or the 90th percentile, just revisit this real quick. It's just this probs argument. Um, so if I give it 0.6, it gives me the 60th percentile. If I were to give it 0.9, it gives me the 90th percentile. Any questions about that? Why we, um, by, you know, by default, it's going to give us um, the 25, 50, 75. Um, but if we do give it that argument, it uh, changes the meaning of the function a little bit. Great. Okay. Uh, so yeah, like I said, um, looking at the TB data, we're looking at the cases by each year. Um, and so this case, like, okay, we've got like what looks like a little bit of a time series. Um, we've got different years as our, our variables and then different countries uh, as our rows. Okay. And I'm just going to use this call names function to kind of get this. This is a very messy column name. I don't love it. Um, but it's telling us kind of what's going on here. Okay, so like I said, uh, messy column name. So let's, before we go further, let's rename this so um, our life is a little easier. Um, so we'll use the rename function and deploy R for this. And in this special case, I know we uh, talk a little bit about like when to use quotes, when not to. Um, normally we wouldn't have to here, but in this case, because there's spaces, there's all kind of weird characters and stuff like that, we need to use the back ticks um, for R to understand this correctly. So what we're doing here is we're using this rename function to rename this messy column into country, much easier to read. And of course, we're doing that on the TB data set and using the pipe to say, I want to do this on TB and reassigning it. So it overwrites that original TB. Okay. And if we do call names, just like before, it'll show us that that, uh, sorry, that that first column is renamed to country. It's not this uh, messy one that we saw before.
Okay, so now we're getting into the really fun stuff. <laughs> I mean, everything before this was fun, but this is like, you can really do some powerful stuff with summarize here. Okay. Um, so just like um, some of the other things we've been working with, uh, the data you wanna update is going on the left side of the assignment operator, this arrow. And then we tell it which data we actually wanna use which data we want to summarize. And then we use this summarize function. You can also, if you're feeling um, like you want to do the British spelling, uh, you can do S here. It's the same. Um, and here, what we do is uh, the whatever the operator we want to use is or whatever the function we want to use is. So that's mean, sum, range, whatever what column we want it to refer to. And then finally, uh, what we want that new column name to be in our, basically our summary table, okay? So if we wanna do the mean from 2006, you know, that column that we saw, um, one of these columns we saw here, I'm telling it, okay, um, I wanna do the mean of this 2006 column, you want to remove NAs. That's always good policy. If you're, you know, maybe it's missing data here and it's not a uh, likelihood that it's like a huge number or something like that. And I'm reassigning it to, or sorry, I'm giving it this new column name in the summary table, uh, mean 2006. Okay. And so then we get a nice little output there. Um, so it's telling us that that was the mean uh, for that particular year. The nice thing about summarize is you can do a lot of stuff at once. So I can just take what I had before and I can separate it by a comma. So if I want to add, uh, you know, I have the mean of 2006, maybe I want to do the median of another year. Um, I can just add as many of these as I want. And just want to call your attention to something here that we can still run this if we don't give it the new column name. So see here, I've, I've pulled out the median for 2004. I've removed NAs um, and I haven't given it a new name. It still runs, but this looks kind of messy. So if you're just using it for your own personal, you know, getting a sense of what's going on in the data, totally fine. Uh, but if you want a nice output in a report or, you know, you're going to come back to it later and have to look at it later, <laughs> then it's a good idea to go ahead and, and rename that in your summary table. Okay, any questions about summarize so far? Okay. We'll chug along here. Okay. Um, so, um, the nice thing is we don't have to tell it every single column. And so this is a little bit more advanced function. You don't have to use it. If you want to list out every, um, column individually, you're of course welcome to do that. Um, but the across function can help you target multiple columns if you're doing the same thing on them. So what I've got inside here, so this is across. But what I've got going on is I'm first listing out in a vector the columns that I want to do something to. And then I have this nice little tilde here. And then I give it the operation of the function that I want to be performed. So in this case, I wanna do sums on all of these columns. And the inside is just, you always do this dot X. Um, this is just kind of a, a way that this notation works that um, it's telling it, oh, okay, well, I need a, a filler there, but I still, I still wanna work on this stuff. Um, and then the na.rm equals true, um, that's the same. But this across on the outside is telling it, okay, I wanna do, I wanna almost iterate through all of these columns and do the same thing on them. 
So this is output we get. Uh, we're doing the sum of cases across all of these columns. And you can see, um, it looks like cases are kind of bouncing around a little bit year to year. And the nice thing is if you have um, columns that all start with kind of the same thing, we've got um, a lot of these starting with two, um, you know, all the years in two, uh, 2000s onward, um, that we can do that and that allows us to get a little shorthand to, you know, look at the range of cases across these different countries um, or among these different countries. Uh, zero is the lowest incidence and then um, up in the thousands is the highest incidence. Okay, um, I mentioned doing um, means um, across rows um, and columns. So we'll talk just a little bit about that. Um, one thing we do wanna do here, um, before we get into any row means, column means, you do need to make sure all of your data is numeric, okay? And so if, let me see if I've got it pulled up here, yep. So when we look at TB, we have a column country, and that's definitely not numeric. So what I'm gonna do just to prepare it to do some of these, uh, these additional functions, I'm gonna move this back to the column names, or sorry, the row names. Um, and so this does the opposite of what we talked about yesterday, which is this row names to column. Okay, so it works exactly the same way, um, but it just does the, it does, uh, the opposite. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm taking, uh, column to row names. I'm just going to tell it the data I want it to work on and tell it which column to make the row names. Um, and you can see here that now instead of one, two, three, four, et cetera, I have the names of the countries. Um, and so let's see, TB2. I'm going to autocomplete there, TB, and then I'm going to tell it to use country. Okay, so that looks a little bit different. Okay, and so let's say I want to take the means across um, basically um, all of these. Um, all of these different columns. So, you know, across time, I can do that with this row means function. Um, and so I just tell it the data I want it to work on. And just like with mean, range, all that, tell it to remove the NAs. And so then it gives me um, basically a mean for each one of these rows here. Okay. And so, Row means, if I wanna save this as a new variable, I can, but yeah, see, it's giving me like a ton of information here, okay? So for each row in the data set, it's giving me something. Okay, so call means um, does basically, you know, not working on each, given a summary for each row anymore, but actually just a summary for each column. Um, and so what we would, what this would give us here is instead of a summary by country, it's giving us a summary across each of these column names, which were different years. So it's telling us, oh, okay, incidents in 1990, um, 105 is the average across countries. Um, and then by 2007, it's um, not changed too much, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. Um, and the cool thing is um, the call means function can save you a lot of extra coding, but it is possible to do this in uh, with summarize and across that we mentioned earlier. Okay, and I mentioned summary, this super powerful function that gives us a snapshot of each column. Um, 
and gives us the number of NAs, which is super helpful. So if we say summary of the data set in question, um, it's going to give us for each column, each numeric column anyway, um, going to tell us the min, um, first quartile, median, mean, third quartile, um, the maximum, and then the number of NAs. So we do have some NAs in this data set. Um, so want to think about that going forward and whether dropping those NAs when we take the means and stuff like that, whether that's um, appropriate to do. Okay, uh, so with that, let's go ahead and break out into our lab groups. All right, so for the next stuff we're going to be looking at, we're going to work with the youth tobacco survey that we've talked about earlier in the class. Um, and if you had some trouble importing this, um, again, you can use this right here as a substitute, and this will bring in the youth tobacco survey data um, in and uh, and uh, you can start using it and everything. Um, but actually, I think we are at break time. Um, I just looked at the time. I was, I was just looking I was too up. excited to get into this. Um, yeah, it's so hard yeah, when, you're, when you're leading the lecture. <laughs> yeah, sorry, folks. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll pick up here um, in 10 minutes. OK, um, let's get back into it. Um, but before we do that, I wanted to address, there was a question in the chat I thought was good. Um, so we were doing this um, row means TB2 um, function before, and it kind of looked, um, let me expand this out, just like kind of hard to read. Um, but one thing we can do is take the same thing here. And let's actually just pipe it into the data frame function. And it gives us a nice little table. Um, so the tibble and the data frame functions are kind of nice for cleaning stuff up. They don't always work like that, but um, depending on kind of what your output is, they can clean stuff up pretty nicely. Um, do, do, do. Let's go all nice. the way back up. So many countries. Yeah. So I, all I did was take that previous command and I piped in a data frame to that. And hopefully that's not, oh God, not horrible to read. Um, and that's where the, like we, we keep talking about the pipe and that's where it really comes in handy. I don't have to nest it. This, this stuff right here, I don't have to nest it within data frame. That would just mm -hmm. be kind of, I don't know, just uh, less intuitive and a little harder to read. Um, okay, uh, so let me scrunch this down and zoom out a little. Um, okay, um, so we, before break, we were saying um, we're going to work with this youth tobacco survey data again. Um, and it's just basically like different survey data from different years, different states, um, different types of surveys, I believe. Um, so whether, you know, they're um, in middle school or they're in high school and um, whether they've tried to quit, things like that. Okay, um, so let's talk a little bit about some more useful functions. Um, so we talked before break about, and, and in the previous lab, about numeric stuff. Um, but now we're going to talk about some stuff that's useful for categorical data or for character data types. Um, so one function that you'll hopefully be using quite a bit is this unique function, um, which will return all the unique elements of, um, of a vector that you give it. Okay, so let's say I'm taking this youth tobacco survey data and I'm piping this into pull and telling it that I want to pull out this location description column. And I'm saving that as a new variable called locations. And then all I have to do is tell it, okay, I want the unique uh, locations. Um, in this case, I'm gonna just look at the first ones, um, but I'll show you kind of how that works. Um, so YTS, and again, piping that into pull, and then location description. You see, I got like, 
basically like uh, if I'm pulling that particular column, you see I have tons of repeats, right? That's not super useful. What I wanna know is how many distinct, how many unique um, location descriptions there are. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna assign that to a new variable. You don't have to do this. You can certainly um, nest it or um, chain it. So I'm going to do unique locations. And it gives me all kinds of uh, states, or um, it looks like there's also a national value. Um, and DC, some other thing, Virgin Islands, some things that aren't states, I guess, technically. Um, so just good to know. Um, and length, if we combine it with length, it's super helpful. Um, but length will tell you the length of a vector. We talked about this a little already, but combined with unique, it can tell us the number of unique elements. So length, unique locations. So I'm just going to use the up arrow to get this exact same thing. If I want to nest it here, I can do length. It's telling me there's 50. Um, I could also have gotten that information by just the index here, um, but there's 50 unique locations, location description um, in our data set. If I want, again, I can do some training and get that as well. Okay. Um, another uh, useful function, we're just kind of going through them um, to kind of summarize what's going on categorically. Um, so table will return a frequency table of all the unique elements of whatever you give it, okay? So if I say, okay, well, I've got um, the locations is, is basically um, that column. So let's say I wanna do table. Um, then I'm getting a nice uh, frequency here. So I have 378 entries for Alabama, different for Arizona, Arkansas, et cetera. Um, but remember that locations is just a, it's a vector of all of these names, basically. If I try to do table on um, YTS, for example, not YTZ, um, it's trying to do all of the unique combinations of every single column. It's gonna make a table that is impossibly large. Um, so just keep in mind that table works best on one and max probably two columns uh, to give you kind of the unique combinations. Okay, um, so very, very similar. You can use count directly on a data frame. So we don't actually have to pull it this time. Um, we can use count directly from a data frame to give us kind of that same information. Um, so we can do YTS, pipe that into count, and then tell it the co uh, column that we're actually interested in looking at. The, uh, looking at. Okay. So it's giving the same thing. It's giving the frequency just based number of observations for each of these, um, each of these categories here. Um, and so, yeah, like this gives us the same thing as, this one, right? Just a little cleaner. Um, and then again, like this is in a tibble format. So again, it looks a little bit nicer. Okay, so uh, when you're using count, if you want, you can give it multiple columns and it just further subsets the data. So if I'm gonna do, let's also do, your, we're interested in the state, but we're also interested in the topic of the survey. Okay, um, and so see it's, uh, you know, now it's got multiple entries for Alabama, whereas previously we had, um, you know, like 300 some 
we can go back to that previous table, 300 some. We can see here in lines one through three, it's been further subdivided. So kind of useful if you're interested in, in breaking that down. Okay, now we're getting into grouping. Um, and so this is, uh, as telling uh, some folks in the lab previously that this combined with summarize is gonna be um, pretty powerful for doing um, basically like performing some of those summarization functions uh, across different um, different groups. Okay, um, so here's our data set. Um, this is just what it looks like if you were to type it into the console. Pretty straightforward. Uh, clipped a little here, but uh, you get the idea. When we do this group by function, we're telling it, okay, uh, taking the data set, we're piping it into this group by function, and we're telling it what we want it to be grouped by. So this by itself doesn't change the data, okay? So let me show you these tables again, or the, the output again, and hopefully you can see the difference here is here. Um, there's, you know, tells us the dimensions, but it doesn't tell us anything underneath that. But here, we've added this group characteristic. So it's saying, okay, it's grouping by response and there's four di distinct groups there, okay? Okay, so it's grouped now. Importantly, grouping doesn't change the data itself, but it changes how functions in the next steps actually operate on it, okay? So, now, if we take that grouped data and we do summarized on it, instead of getting the summary of the whole data set, we're now getting summary by group. Um, so now, if we take that group data, we do summarize and we say, okay, I want the average um, percent response rate, um, and then do basically what we were talking about before, where we take mean and the column we're interested in, um, you see it's broken down by, um, by group here, by, by response. Okay, we got some NAs in our data. And in this case, I'm not too worried about it, um, but just knowing that they're there. Okay, so in order to kind of make things look nice and just chain stuff together um, in a way that um, you know, you can make your code pretty concise. Um, what we can do is we can take YTS into a group by and then pipe that into summarize. So, you know, let's imagine we're taking that data set, you know, straight off the Excel sheet or the download um, and we're grouping and then running this summarize um, chunk down here and uh, just getting that all in kind of one step. Okay, and um, in some cases, maybe you want to do summaries of the whole data set again, instead of by group, if you want, you can use this ungroup on the data set to um, undo that. So just looking at that really quick. So if we take YTS and we're gonna group by response. So take a look, remember that it includes that grouping element here. Oops. But if we wanna say, and let's say, okay, we're gonna reassign it. For future uh, summarization, that, that data set is now grouped, but let's say we wanna ungroup it. that's gone now. So it's no longer going to be grouped. Things are going to work on the whole data set. Okay. Um, so let's say you want to add a column that is the group mean, you know, let's say we want the, um, the mean response rate um, or the mean um, data, like 
percentage response rate, I guess is what this column means. Um, we want that by year and we want to create a new column for that so we can do some kind of side by side comparison between each individual observation and the group mean. Um, we can do a group by followed by a mutate uh, to look at that. So um, my data is already grouped. So I'm going to do a group by, and let's just double check that. Yep, so it's already grouped by response. Um, let's ungroup. Um, what we could do is just overwrite it with a new grouping. Uh, so just be aware of that. If you don't want to, like you don't have to ungroup and regroup each time, you can just kind of use whatever the last input group was. So let's take YTS and group by year. And Let's do mutate to add a new column, year average, and we're just telling it the mean of this data value column and telling it to remove NAs. Okay, um, so hard to see because it's been cut off here. So this is why um, I've got this select function here at the end, um, but it's added this new column. You can kind of see at least the name here. You can't preview it, but you can see that that column has been added. OK, um, so maybe um, just like we were looking at the tables before, maybe you just want a frequency count in addition to the mean. You want to know how many data points went into it. Um, you can use the n function for this. And so uh, this works just the same way or much the similar similar way to uh, mean sum and all that. But because it's just counting rows, you actually don't need to provide a, a data, um, uh, the column that you're looking at. So again, um, mean the column in a dot rm equals true. Um, and then here, um, I don't need anything, but I'm still going to rename that column. I think that looks nice. OK, um, so now we've covered a little bit of group by and basically understanding a little bit more what's going on with our categorical variables. Um, and so we'll jump back to the breakout rooms. OK, let me get this to a normal size again. OK, um, and I'm just going to clear this because it's looking a little messy. All right. Um, Okay, so we're just going to, this is just going to be a couple of slides, um, but now we're going to do a quick preview of plotting. So this is a, just a preview of what's to come uh, later in the class where we'll do some really cool visualizations um, and, and get to do like really pretty plots. Um, these plots, I think, are just going to be good for, you know, diagnosing data. They're good for you to check in in uh, real time. So, uh, like I said, plotting is uh, can be an important component of uh, exploratory data analysis. You know, you want to make sure that you um, have just an expected distribution of data. Um, these are basically like pretty quick and easy plots that you can use in real time while you're exploring data. And um, like I said, we'll go over some of the stuff to make it pretty a little later on. Uh, so basic summarization plots, um, you can have a scatter plot if you have an X and Y variable that are numeric uh, and you want to compare those. You can do a box plot um, for levels of X um, with a Y response. Uh, so Y would be continuous. 
and X could be categorical or maybe something like a date, something that feels a little bit more discreet. Uh, hist gives a histogram of whatever variable you give it. And you can also plot density if you want. That's very similar to histogram, but it's going to look a little smoother. Okay. Um, so really quick, if we want to plot um, x, an x and a y variable, all we have to do uh, to make a scatter plot is just plot. Um, and we can't do um, actual data frames in here, but we can pull a column that we want as a vector. So let's pull from the JHU cars data set. Let's pull horsepower for our x variable. And let's pull JHU cars um, MPG, miles per gallon, as our y variable. So it's telling me um, I can't plot that because your R studio is too small and I don't like it. So let me make this a little bigger. Try it again. Okay. Um, doesn't look beautiful, but if I want to, I can zoom in and see this nice little plot. So if I'm thinking, you know, does my data actually make sense? You know, I'm, I, again, I don't know a ton about cars, but I feel like more horsepower means you're not as fuel efficient and that kind of uh, jibes with that understanding. So there's a little bit of a negative relationship. Um, so I think my data may be okay. Okay. If I wanna do a box plot, um, just remember there's this little squiggle and on this right-hand side, I have whatever the x-axis is, and so that should be continuous or discrete. Um, and then on the y-axis, I have whatever that response variable is. Um, and in this case, um, more cylinders leads to more horsepower. Okay, so that kind of makes sense too. Um, and a histogram, you know, let's just say I want to see what's the distribution of miles per gallon. I don't have any cars uh, that are super outliers um, giving me, you know, 100 miles per gallon or something like that. Um, or maybe I just want to make sure I don't have any like Teslas in my data set or something. Um, so I can just do a hist of whatever that is. And one thing I like uh, about hist uh, is this additional argument you can add. This just add a comma and then breaks actually gives you a little bit more resolution. So this one, I only had five columns, but maybe I want 10. Um, and it gives me uh, 10, 10 groups to look at. OK, and finally, this is kind of what that density plot looks like. It's very similar to histogram, but uh, you see it's kind of smoothed. And we can see there's like a little bit of a bump around 30, um, but uh, doesn't look like a terrible distribution to me. OK, so that's it. And in the last part of the lab, we'll just play around a little with some of these exploratory plots. And, um, and then I think we'll be time for break after that. <laughs>